All oh, right, here we go, start my webcam. Right, anyway, welcome everybody. You'll see me in just one moment, I hope. Here we go, yeah, start sharing, yeah. Okay, so hopefully you can see me. I can see myself anyway. Um, welcome to what is our fourth webinar. Focus today is literature with a poetry focus. Um, just to let you know, if you lose me, don't panic, because the wonderful Pam will step into the breach, and she's fully briefed, so that's great. But I am um, back to basics now. I've abandoned the Mac in favor of the old-fashioned laptop, so hopefully, and I'm plugged in via Ethernet and all sorts, so I should be fine. Um, right, I'm starting off here with a first line. Oh, obviously, if you've got a problem here, put your hand up. Um, and somebody will, will help you out. If you've got a specific question, please put it in the Q&A box. If it's open discussion, just to say hello, so I can see people have already, Lisa, Simone, Jennifer, um, etc. have said hello, so please do share ideas there. Um, comment on anything or share ideas. Um, starting off with a first line from a poem that I found in this book which is the brilliant Jennifer Webb's book on how to teach English literature. I have um, pushed it for her before, but there's a whole lesson plan for this in the back, which I've shamelessly used and I'm sharing with you today. Um, so we'll come back to that in a moment. Here's just um, another first line for you. Simon Armitage has written a lockdown poem, and the first line is, I couldn't escape the waking dream of infected fleas. I thought that was an interesting one, actually, um, just as an intro. The poem itself, you can get on the Guardian website, or I should imagine by just Googling Lockdown by Simon Armitage. But I thought it was a really interesting first line, maybe for when we're back at school, perhaps. Now, the polls we did at the beginning, in the beginning suggest we've got 94% um, of you from schools. So welcome to those that are from FE, and obviously those from schools. 18% of you are head of department, and 68% teacher. Uh, what's really rather lovely is we've got 20% of participants are with AQA or with other exam boards, so that's really lovely, so welcome. Um, obviously, we're open to all. So let's just go through what we're going to do today. We are going to have a quick check-in, um, give you an update and some feedback, um, share some online ideas, and then go into some literature ideas and resources of the week, which are obviously poetry. Then you'll have your tea break, time to discuss, share, energize, I was rather hoping, um, given that we've got the news that we may well be allowed out, if only to a garden centre, which has never seemed so exciting, has it? The idea of a garden centre. I absolutely can't wait. Um, I'm hoping they do haircuts, actually. It would be a good idea, wouldn't it? If you ran a garden centre, start doing haircuts. Um, and we're going to preview some new resources. But first, I'm going to hand over to Liz Slade, who's just going to very briefly talk you through some off-call feed uh, updates. Are you there, Liz? Yes, I'm here. Hi, thanks, Julie. Just very quickly, um, just two um, new um, updates this week. So firstly, Ofqual have confirmed that Year 10s who were entered for exams this summer will be awarded a grade. Um, and secondly, that private candidates will be awarded a grade, providing that um, it's signed off and confirmed by a, um, a registered centre. Um, so they're the two confirmations we've had this week. Obviously, as we said before, the top link will take you to all the most recent news and FAQs there from Ofqual. And as you're aware, um, they, we, they did publish a consultation and we're expecting the outcome of that on the 15th of May. So obviously, we'll update you as and when we hear more about that. Okay, thanks, Julie. Thank you. Okay, back to um, this week. Uh, we're doing literature with a poetry focus. Next week, just to remind you, we'll be doing language, so please get your ideas in, get your requests in for language. And just another little plea, we've had about five lots of resources in that I'm going to share with you later, but please, please, please send them in, even if all you do is adapt the ones that are on here. That would be fantastic. So let's just go to a little bit of a check-in then, if everybody's okay. And we've got two questions for you this week. What's your biggest issue when teaching poetry in the classroom is the first one. I know that mine often just is that kids think it's really tricky. And um, I often think I make a mountain of something that, that, that should be quite simple and enjoyable. But I'd be interested in your views. And how have you approached teaching poetry remotely? Have you actually tried to teach poems from scratch? Or have you just done revision activities? So that would be really interesting. So John, if we could go to the boxes there, the chat boxes, please. Seamless. Thank you.
Great, we've got some lovely ideas coming in. I didn't know whether you could hear me over this, over what you're typing, but if we just go through, interestingly, biggest issue, one of the issues comes up is the stigma surrounding poetry, which I think is really interesting. But also another one coming through is that the teacher lack of confidence, um, particularly NQTs perhaps, so that's an interesting one. No time, and I totally agree with that, no time to do the, um, to do the fun stuff. Um, you just feel like you're feeding an exam machine. Somebody says repeating the process 15 times over, so it's not so boring. Um, students have a fear of poetry. Absolutely, they instantly shut down then, which you have to overcome, um, dis despite trying to do exciting stuff in Key Stage 3. In terms of how you've approached teaching, some people are doing clear comparisons, doing a lot of breaking down the context stanza by stanza. But one thing that's coming across there is that unseen is working well. And I think that's a really good idea, actually, to use this as an opportunity for unseen, because perhaps as well, without the classroom, people are going to be a little bit freer with their responses without feeling they're going to be judged. Oh, somebody's put, I teach a very low ability group, and I'm not there to control or enthuse. I totally appreciate that, totally get it. Um, somebody's broken the poems down into categories and do short bursts over the year. That's a good idea. Um, year 10 struggled with this remotely, somebody said. Thought short and sweet would work, but it didn't. Yes, I agree. I haven't had much success with it, actually. I'm having more success with Jekyll and Hyde as a new read. Year seven, of uh, somebody's been using Teams. I think maybe lower down the school there, more prepared to do analysis and more prepared to have a go. And by the time they get into key stage four, they're perhaps feeling a bit of a straitjacket and they want their answers. And somebody's put that it's, it's, it's easy to get into the habit of spoon feeding. I think that's really good, actually. People looking at the meaning without us there. And again, it's a confidence thing. Perhaps by the time they get to key stage four, they're so used to waiting for the answer. OK, using visual ideas, to, uh, images to, to represent ideas, that's a really good idea. I'll just give another couple of minutes on that. I love it. Somebody's it's actually putting that. Um, Remote learning removes the spoon feeding, so perhaps it's actually going to re-energize us. Perhaps it's going to be great, the idea that they're going to have a go without us. Lovely. Some lovely ideas here. I must remember that I'm, you can hear me at the moment and not go off on a tangent. I like the idea of letting them watch videos on the poet, understanding why they wrote it. So it's maybe remotely we can get into that background on, on creativity with a poem that we can't maybe do in the classroom. So perhaps it might be uh, it might be a new it encourages into a new approach. I know that I start every year of poetry teaching thinking that I'm going this is going to be different, and my students are going to totally get into it and find poems to bring in and absolutely wow me with their ideas, and then I just end up putting it on the board and them asking what the answers are, which is always depressing. Taking words from the poem and asking them to write their own poem, I love that idea. I did that with as an introduction to a sonnet this year, and they wrote their own sonnet. There's a brilliant website, actually, where you can create your own sonnet. It comes out daft, but that's great. It's really good for, for um, analyzing and uh, looking at structure. OK, I think we're going to end it. We're going to need to end that pretty soon. OK, I'm going to just wait for Scott to finish typing. And I'm going to say, let's go back or come back into the room, please. So let's end that. Thank you, John. Thanks. That was really great, actually. Hopefully, you've got some good ideas there. Um, feedback seemed to be fairly, we all seem to be having the same problem. And I think poetry is one of those problem areas that we don't want it to be. But it is that whole stigma of, us perhaps in assuming that students don't like it, students thinking they don't like it, and it becomes this big kind of area, and there's 15 of them in the exam, which always seems hugely overwhelming. And no matter what your um, best hopes are, your best endeavors, you, you end up always at the end of year 11, towards the end, thinking, oh my god, I haven't done one poem yet. And it always ends up being a problem. So let's hope that some of the online stuff we're looking at today and some of the resources I'm going to give you will help. So let's look at some online resources. The first is, I went back to teach it. Now, I was just looking for a particular resource, and I assumed that it was just the stuff that um, 
you know, the, the Word document um, that, you could, that you could now get free. I didn't realize that all their resources are free. So here we go. This is one. Now, if you are AQA, this is a treat for you because this is an AQA resource. But if you go onto their shop, you can get a rather wonderful, and I'll hold it up, a rather wonderful power and conflict student revision booklet made by a lady who does these wonderful drawings called Hannah Roberts. And there's a drawing, as you can see, there's one for the prelude there, but there's one for every poem in the AQA anthology. There's a lovely one there. OK. Now, several of the poems are the same across the Edexcel anthology, the reason why I'm sharing it. And each one, no, I'm sorry, um, Rosa, they don't have one for relationships. It is only power and conflict at the moment, I'm sorry. But each one has got four or five revision ideas for it. But it would work, perhaps, um, you know, Edexcel for, um, for you know, un unseen poem ideas as well. But also, if you are under confident yourself, the picture page has, as you can see, full annotation and full ideas of analysis for the poem. So it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and that's free at the moment, as are all their booklets. Uh, they've got loads. So this is your opportunity to squirrel away now um, and use later. Another thing I found free on Teachit is you can use their cruncher. Now, I know you can get a free cruncher online. It's really easy. I've used it um, quite often with poetry. But here, you can not only put your poem in, but I followed a link to a blog, and you can make the crunch a little bit more exciting than just one box. OK, so you can pick out, as you can see from this one, this was done with Catherine, you can pick out different word classes and put them in different boxes. So I thought that was a really useful idea as well. And that is free to use at the moment on Teachit, so worth having a look. And the next one is a lovely website, the Poetry Society. You may well have been on this before, uh, but I found there I can't remember what I was looking for, but I found last week a poetry class section, more suitable probably for Key Stage 3. But they've got some really lovely activities on there, and they have got a whole section on how to read a, an unseen poem. They've also got lesson plans, and I found one using a poem written by one of the Foyle's Young Poets of the Year, and it's called The Parents' Anniversary. And it's a whole lesson plan around it. It's rather lovely. You can also find links to poetry competitions, etc. So it's a really nice one to have a look at. And the next one, and I'm sure I've given you a link there if you want to listen to one, but you've probably seen already but the lovely Patrick Stewart is reading um, A Sonnet a Day. And I just thought it was a good idea. A, it's nice to listen to him. He's, well, he's got a rather lovely voice. But also, it's a really good way of, of encouraging students, really, perhaps also at A-level, to listen to a poem being read by an expert. And he has a little brief chat about it at the end. So it's, it's really rather lovely. So I thought I'd share that with you if you didn't already know. They're on YouTube and they're on um, his Twitter handle. He shares them every day. So that was my sharing of the week. OK, so now let's get into the resources. OK, so I'm going to share some little ideas here that I've used over the years and that I've magpied from other people. Um, OK, so this is the first one. Now, this is interesting because I asked my husband to proofread this PowerPoint. And then I sent it through to Pam at Pearson's. And both of them started to correct my mistakes, thinking I'd had a complete mare here. But it is intended to be a combination of SPAG activity and higher level critique. So what I do is I find, this is a fairly um, middle of the range one, but I find for top set sometimes they get insulted wrongly, actually, by me correcting, giving them correction activities because they think they they walk on water as far as um, SPAG is concerned. Um, so I found a way of doing it with and, 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 um, and smoothing their pride. And that was by getting a, a high level critique and changing it so that they had to correct it and read it and use it in their analysis. So it was a really good idea for getting them to extend their ideas without just listening to me. And I found they were more inclined to do that than they were to read the critique if I gave it to them. OK, so it gave them a reason to read it. So I just do those as starter activities. So that was one idea for you. That has worked well. And the next one, this is the opening line then from the poem um, that I found in Jennifer Webb's book. And I've used this with Key Stage 3, Key Stage 4, and with um, adult training courses. And it has proved, so far proved to be the best poem I've ever used for an introduction to unseen poetry. So the idea being that in a lesson, you would give them just the first line and mine it for you know, as many um, ways as you can. 
Okay, so which word would they pick if they were only allowed one? Now, most students, once they knew the meaning, and I give these pictures to help them sometimes, will pick submerged. But I've actually had some really interesting answers from people who have picked the word closest. Okay, so there, you've got ideas straight away. Which word, what are the connotations, etc. And if you want to know, the poem is written by somebody called Adam Lowe, L-O-W-E. And here is me taking it a little bit further. This is what I did for Key Stage 3, so they had a what, how, why, which I've moved over to instead of the kind of um, dreaded P. Uh, and I got some good ideas for this. What might the poem be telling us? How has he chosen to tell us? And you can extend that into what do you think the topic is, uh, what do you think the theme is, etc. And then the final line. So actually, does anybody have any idea? Put it in the, in the open discussion. What do you think the topic of the poem is? I'll show you that final line. And it's that. My crown sinks among the weeds. Okay, so there's the. Nobody's typing anything at the moment. No, no open discussion, which is interesting. I hope it's. Oh yeah, somebody's typing now. And there is a little background, just in case they didn't know what a weed was. Um, just the idea there. So somebody's typing. Anxiety. Oh, I like it. Um, depression. Depression. Interesting, actually. I'll see what you think when you see the whole poem. I like it. Overwhelmed, a fall, for, fall from grace. I love it. Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. What I then do, wounded pride, yeah, I love it, is give them both and say what's in the middle. And this I take as far as I want here. What's the theme? What's the topic? What's the tone? What's the form? Who's the audience? All kinds of things. Somebody, Natalie, is saying, love this resource. Good. I love it. The life cycle of a pond-based animal, a toad. Yeah, I love it. Which actually links in, perhaps, in a weird kind of way with falls from grace. Um, perhaps um, fishing with a crown on. Yeah, we'll see in a minute, actually. We'll see. I like the idea of crown. It made me think of the Stormzy um, poem, which I've used alongside it, actually. Um, because I'm so down with the kids. Um, a really lovely approach and really gets them thinking about writer's choices. It does. It does. Somebody's put wild swimming. Heavy as the head. Yeah, that's it, Luke. Yes, the Stormzy poem. Um, right, then I compare it. But I'm, I'm going to show you the comparison poem before I show you this poem. So here you go. It's actually the topic is meant to be unrequited love, as you'll see when you see the whole poem in a minute. Um, and somebody's put, do we have access to the PP? I presume you mean PowerPoint. Yes, you will get sent it at the end. Now, this is, I just found this online. It's not a particularly good poem, which is great, actually, if you're using it for top set, because I've had some, um, I had to actually put some um, apostrophes in here, because it didn't have apostrophes in. Uh, this is really good for revising the sonnet form. And as I said earlier, if you want to write a sonnet, there's a sonnet creator that's free on the internet, which is great fun. Okay. Um, I always go, another technique from Jennifer Webb is the find three things um, that I've been doing for a long while, is just tell me three things about it. This is a poem called A Man Called David Wood, and I found it on the Poem Hunter website. And this is good for revising the sonnet form. So putting them together, rather than just doing the boring bit, I do this. Okay. Now, I do speed dating, and I set it up like a speed dating um, in the classroom. We have to socially distance the speed dating now, but I'm sure we could still manage it. But the idea being three things to talk about. Now, there you've got the whole poem that we looked at, the closest I've come to feeling submerged. It's a really lovely poem, and it's got so much in it analytically. And I've found it works at every level. Because there's something, even if you don't understand what algae is, and you're not sure about ultrasound, and you're not sure what koi fish are. But the idea of koi fish, why not koi carp? Just koi fish. It's, it's wonderful. It's, it's just fantastic. OK. Um, so thanks to Jennifer Webb for finding this for us. Um, but I say then, the very first meeting, let's think about being on a speed date. The very first thing I do is I, I, I'm shallow. I'm going to look at what they look like. So I say, what do they look like? So you sit down, or you, you, you put two poems together, and the first thing you've got to do is to say, let's look at each other. I'm a lovely, perfectly formed sonnet with a, a beautiful message, and I'm looking across at a messy, broken up sentence, free flow structure. How do I feel? I'm not the kind of person that likes that kind of thing, maybe. Um, or I'm a free flow, cash, um, back to nature, vegan. And I'm looking at a tightly buttoned sonnet. How do I feel? So um, 
there's just some ideas about what structure. Now, I think structures often missed. Um, somebody says they can hear two people speaking at once. I'm not quite sure. And it's very unclear. Sorry. Um, I do apologize for that. I'm hoping everybody else can hear it. Um, I think structure is something that is sadly neglected with poetry. It's a very, very easy, a very, very easy area to look at, particularly for students who find the language quite impenetrable. So it's a really good idea. Um, thank you for thank you for um, telling everybody else telling me they can hear. That's brilliant. Um, and, and you can look at and, and obviously form structure again. Um, you can compare here openings and endings, and think how much you can actually right for an unseen response without even touching on tricky language. That's what I wanted to get across there, and I think this does. And then the good old poetry crunch. Here's the, the um, poem again, and I've crunched it down into another poem. So we, I, I often get them to make another poem out of, out of the crunch, actually, and see what other form they could use for that. So that's that one. Moving on, I hope everybody's OK with the sound. Model paragraph. I've shown a couple of these in past sessions. It's one of my most powerful and popular things, actually. I give it out at the, often at the end of a lesson. Um, and they have to find the short embedded quotations. What's brilliant, actually, is if you don't do one of the skills. Okay. Now, I haven't done a proper analysis of form and structure here. And it's really good for checking student understanding and actually seeing who is the bright spark who says, Miss, you haven't done this bit. Um, and hopefully you haven't done it deliberately. All right. Um, oh, somebody says, I use one of these with my year 10s over Microsoft Teams, and they loved it. Brilliant. I think it's great. And also, it gets stuck in the book, and they can then use it as a model going forward. So it works really well. They can go back to it. And I sometimes give them out blank with lines in the middle, and they have to put theirs in. And somebody else then has to annotate it. So there's loads of uses for this. And you can see there that I've left the paragraph unfinished, and I haven't started the next one. So I haven't actually done the, the, um, the comparison. Uh, yes, Sarah says, does poetry crunch simply mean picking out the keywords? Sarah, what I do with poetry crunch is it, they just pick out the word that they like most out of each line, or every other line. And I do it with literature text. I do it with everything. And what it does is it takes that, it gives them a little bit of confidence and takes the fear away. Because I think um, sometimes students can look at a poem or a, an extract from Jekyll and Hyde and just be frightened. And if they can pick out a word they feel they can handle, what it does is it shows them, even if they can only pick three out of the whole poem, they've got three things to say, which is great. So it's that breaking it down, really, and making it accessible and not highfalutin. Here's another of my favorite ideas. And this is here, a little competition for you. Oh, no, this, this is, you won't have seen these, so you can't tell me what they are. Um, wrong, wrong resource here. Um, unseen poetry. These are three poems about age, and if you want to use them in the classroom, when you get the PowerPoint, you just need to take the highlighting away. And then the middle one is the one about I shall wear purple when I get old. So this is an intro. Rather than giving them words as an intro, I sometimes just give them shapes, and I say, what do the shapes suggest about age, about the narrator's feelings about age? or about the feelings that are expressed in the poem about age. Okay, So I do it with three or four poems on the same theme, and it's worked really well. It gives them something, again, accessible to, to write about. And in the exam, I have seen people actually draw around the shape of the poem and say something about it. So that's worked brilliantly. OK, so this is another. This is a, I'm going to show you a rather off-the-wall idea now that I had recently that has worked really well. So before you even read a poem, this is for your anthology poems, or, or key stage four or three, whichever you want. Imagine you gave them this and said, you want to write a poem to expose a powerful man who you feel is arrogant and domineering. You also suspect he may have killed his wife. Be careful. You want to show him to be self-serving, that he is smooth talking, and you need to reflect that. Will you use a sonnet, a ballad, a dramatic monologue, or free verse? And for each one, they have to tell me why. Now, um, I'll read out what Natalie said in a minute while I go on to this. This has worked really well, actually. And I've just done a very short one there. But I've used it with a lot more contextual ideas. So it, it's a sneaky way of getting context in, but without being a history lesson. Okay. And this is, can anybody tell me what poem this is, actually? I'm not sure if it's in the anthology, but it's one um, that used to be. 
Um, and while you're thinking about that, yeah, you're right, it's browning, it's my last touches, obviously. Excellent. I didn't see there was a great idea earlier on that I hope we all saw um, about the, here, Natalie says, gradually revealing words and seeing how their ideas develop and change over the course of the activity. Yeah, you can also have a class prediction slide for what they think the poem is about. Brilliant, yeah, you can. Excellent, yeah. Okay, so that's my last touches. Then I've got another one here. See if you can guess what poem this is. You want to write a poem about a poor, naive young girl who is seduced by a rich and powerful lord. When he tires of her, he callously casts her aside, leaving her pregnant and with nothing but shame. And I should have thought, and a baby. But um, Will you use a sonnet? Yes, it is. It's Cousin Kate, yeah. A sonnet, a ballad, a dramatic monologue of a free verse. Now, this worked really well for Cousin Kate because I was able to really talk about the idea of a ballad. Now, that, people get all, um, you know, get their knickers in a twist, really, about form and, and, and how tricky it is. It doesn't have to be. A ballad is just something that is passed down over time. So I love the idea of Cousin Kate because it, it particularly with the sort of Me Too um, stuff that's been happening in society recently, this kind of suggests that nothing changes about the relationship between powerful men and, and vulnerable women. So that's hence the ballad. So this has worked really, really well. Okay, really well. Um, and it'd be lovely if you could share some about other poems or sneak some. Th these were kind of very basic. If you sneak some serious context in, and they have to dis explain why. And you can even, I've done it with two boxes, with just a sonnet and a ballad and a dramatic monologue and fevers. And then in the other, I've had other poetic terms and features that they might want to use in it. So they've, they've talked then, because I don't like feature spotting. But if they can say, well, I'm, I think I'd use an overall metaphor of because then that, it's really perfect. It really gets them thinking about what techniques are for rather than finding a technique and then just naming it. So I find it really useful for that. And here's another one for you to guess. Three poems from your anthology, for the Ed Edexcel anthology, but two of them, I think, are also in the AQA, or at least one of them is. Um, and this is an idea that I pinched from ages ago from somebody on Twitter, and I, d I didn't get a name. So I do apologize if, if, if somebody knows who it is. So it's, I am a ballad with six regular stanzas. Which poem am I? Why do I have this form? OK, so that one is uh, um, Cousin Kate. And then the top one, I have four quatrains with two rhyming couplets in each. Which poem am I? Why do I have this form? So does anybody know what that one is? And then the bottom, I am eight regular quintains, but the last line of each is cut short. Which poem am I and why do I have this form? Yeah, first one is Poison Tree. Well done, Luke. And the final one, see if Scott knows. But this has been really useful, actually, again, for thinking about how the, how the poem links to the, how the, the ideas in the poem links to the, to the structure, but also how easy it is to write about structure. Once you see it, you can tell. Um, and yes, it is. It's exposure. That's the final one. OK. So I'm coming to the end of these now, dead on time, which is great. Hope that's useful. One more here. Now, this comes from a new resource. This is written by uh, a lady who works for Pearson as a freelancer, a lady called Emma Clark. She's written a PowerPoint lesson with a voiceover. And I'm going to tell you about some more of those that we've done later on. But this is one on, on poetry. And it takes you through how to compare a poem. And it's absolutely fabulous. The idea is that students listen to it, stop the recording whenever they want, and do the activities on the PowerPoint. So it's sort of like a lesson. And I think um, Liz has very kindly shared the link now. Um, and I will tell you about the rest of them later on. But there are several ones we put up. So this is a really good idea again. And this is a full analysis there of, of two poems. OK. Everybody's saying thank you for that. Thanks, Liz, for that. So it ends with a model paragraph activity. But it's worth looking at the PowerPoint, even if you don't use it with your students, because Emma has used a really good comparative technique with um, a very simple table. And it really does take the sting and the fear and the worry out of comparing poems. It makes it so much more straightforward. So I can highly recommend that. OK, that's the end of the resources. Thanks, everybody. Let's look at, we're going to have a tea break now. Now, if you haven't been with us before, what happens now? is that we break out into four rooms. You have a Pearson person with you in each room. But we're going to change it today, because at the end of the breakup time, breakout time, and you can talk about anything. There are no set questions. It's just a matter of sharing 
ideas and um, you know just 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 talking energizing inspiring and at the end we're going to ask one of the people from each room to use their mic if they've got one or, or talking to their laptop and everybody will be able to hear them so we're going to ask people to share their ideas about what's happened in their room so hopefully somebody will be brave enough to put their hand up and do what I'm doing at the moment you don't have to be seen though okay so let's think about a poetry focus what have you what have you just seen that you think you can use or adapt what have you used that you'd like to share with people would you like any help could you you know ask for a shout out now okay so let's do that now let's break out thank you I think we're back. Who's going to speak for their room, yeah. please? Well, um, I was going to say the room I was in, Simone was um, in there from the beginning on camera and talking, and she did a great job of oh, summarising yeah. things. I don't know if she can do that now. I don't know if you can, if we can let let Simone through. Come on, Simone. Um, Come on down. Simone. Yep, yeah. Simone Johnson. John, I don't know if you can do that for me. Can you please? It's like the Eurovision Song Contest, isn't it? It is, isn't Simone, it? Yeah. Have your votes, please. <laughs> Nil point. I've always wanted to say that. Come on. Yeah. No, we had really, really good um, ideas in the room. So hopefully she can come on in a second. Go on. Liz, did you? What about? Oh, you, there we go. Simone, I can hear you. I think you're there. We can hear you. your mic is enabled. Apparently, do you want to say something? Can you hear me now? Yes. Thanks, Simone. Yes, go we ahead. can hear you now. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, right. Hi. Hiya. We actually did really well in ours. There was lots of different ideas. And um, one of the big things that came out in our group was looking at imagery and how, especially for lower sets, they they see the words on the page and they, as you said, they completely switch off. But trying to get them this idea that many of the poems are actually made up of different images and pictures and most of those pictures convey meaning. So we were talking a lot about how people would use different images and pictures to create it, like connect to certain words and certain key quotes. Um, lots of kids found it difficult to kind of remember a whole poem, but they could remember key quotes and think about the images and discuss that, and which would get them marks. Um, I like the idea there was one of the girls talked about evaluating the poem and really getting them to think about an evaluation of it, and they would come up with statements about the poem and then get the kids to say whether they agree or disagree with that statement. And I think that would work really well for like the higher ability where they can analyze the poem really, really well in terms of context, in terms of language, in terms of structure and techniques, but not actually think about an opinion. Oh, that's and great. Think, to get like those really like the higher marks, you have to have an opinion with it. You have to be able to express your own ideas. And so I quite like the idea of that. Um, they talked about where you were showing like having the words highlighted and revealing a certain word. And one, another one of the girls picked up on revealing words that link to tone. Um, so rather than just looking at the connotations of particular words, they were looking at the actual tone of it. And I think that one would work really well for like poems such as Cousin Kate, where so many of the kids miss out on the sarcastic yeah, nastiness they do. Yeah. of their voice. Yes. And in a lot of yeah, that brilliant. is in the Rossetti poems, and they just don't get how she's very, very bitter. A brilliant. really bitter woman. And I thought that was really, really good. Thank you so much. You are getting brilliant feedback from the Pearson team. I think you'll be doing my job soon. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Simone, do we have anybody else? Liz, did you have anybody in your group? Um, can in my group, would you mind raising your hand? Sorry, we didn't we didn't ask for volunteers. So would anyone like to speak? We had Nicole, Laura, Sam, you had loads of ideas. Well everyone did actually. We had absolutely loads of ideas in our team. Would any of you like to Speak. If so, could you click on the hand? Oh, up one person's raised their hand, Nicola. We can ask. Oh, Nicole. Yes. Is that okay, JP? Can you give the um, mic to Nicole, please? Nicole, your mic's on. Hello, Nicole. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant, we can hear you, go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, sorry about that. Um, so we were actually looking about, um, in particular, looking at lower ability students, trying to boost their confidence up, and also in particular looking at struggling with how to compare poems 
um, for those tasks on the exam. Um, I mean, one example in particular that definitely works for a lot of our lower ability students is almost trying to turn it into a bit of an interview forum. So once the students have really got an understanding of the characters, to then ask them to think about, okay, well, interview those characters or those speakers in the poem. Um, so, for example, on the AQA spec, we look at um, the poem War Photographer and we look at the poem Remains and thinking about, okay, well, what is it that the speaker has seen in uh, War Photographer? How has it impacted them, what they've seen? And likewise, what has the, the person, the speaker, seen in Remains and how has it impacted them? And hopefully then the students can start to spot the similarities in what they're saying and then they can draw out those ideas and those feelings and be able to discuss those themes within their responses in terms of building a response to a comparison question. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Thanks very much. Okay. okay. Now, I can, now I can hear an echo. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> I'll just share a few of mine then. One thing I hadn't realised that Gillian Clark apparently has a lovely website where you can actually, she's happy to discuss interpretations of Catherine. Um, Mary Meredith on YouTube apparently is very useful for Ed Excel poems. We were, had a long discussion on using songs for musicals um, and you know, get, uh, listening to them and then getting the students to, to choose one to analyse, which is a good idea. Um, Somebody's put on the chat, definitely advocate the use of role playing scenarios as a means to understand and empathize. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. And Rose's put, I use raps, absolutely. Um, helps tap into the use of tone. Yeah, good idea. I think all of us have these wonderful ideas, don't we? I think it's sometimes difficult. Just the, the pressure of, of fit, fitting them into a key stage four curriculum, I think, is really, really difficult. So if nobody else has got their hand up, I think we'll, we'll move on. Everybody else, everybody okay with that, I'm assuming? And yes, yeah, somebody's put rap, but without the swear words. Absolutely. They usually come from me, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> Moving on. Um, shared resources. We've had some lovely stuff in. Let's have a quick look. This is like the bit on children's television, isn't it, where they hold up the kind of, and now we have a birthday card from Olivia, who is three today. Um, but it isn't that. It's better. So there's our contributors for this week. So thanks to all of them, Joe, Sarah, Jinder, Joanne, and Nicola. And you'll get all the resources. We're making them into the little booklet. Pam's done that, so they'll be coming out. But here they are anyway. I love this one, text analysis table. I love that. I was thinking you could also do that as like um, a game with dice, if you had numbers across the top, or like battleships um, would be good. Okay, so that, that's, I thought that was a really good idea. I love that, love that table. And this is a lovely idea for making a story. Would work beautifully remotely. Pick at least one image, one emotion, and one statement from the boxes and make a story. I love that. I think that's brilliant. It would be really good to do that with Key Stage 3. In fact, I'm, I may well set that for my next um, Key Stage 3 lesson. That's fantastic. And somebody's put, yes, love the table. It's like bingo. It is. It's brilliant. What I like about that, both of these activities, there's, there's something for everybody to have a go at, which I think is really important um, at this moment in time as well. And then we have this one, which has been adapted from a resource I gave out in the first of the webinars. You can't read it very well, but if you look at the, if you want the original PowerPoints, if you didn't get them, we can send them out to you. But this is basically an idea where you put a text in the middle and then you summarize it, you find things and you crunch it. Okay, find the nine juiciest words and put them into the teeth. And I see there's a time limit there of 10 minutes and it's an extract from Dracula. But people have been saying actually that where they've used that for language and literature, the responses later on when they've used these notes have been way, way better. So I've probably had more positive feedback on that resource than any other. Okay. Any other ideas to share, there's our website. If you haven't been with us before, do send them to the full English at Pearson.com, okay? Um, and Pam will collate them. Uh, we don't have the address or anything to send them into if but we're all we're all electronic these days, aren't we? So we'll make them available to everybody who signs up. Um, send us your requests through the questionnaire link at the end. So stay on at the end, okay, so we can do the, the questionnaires. Let's just check in the time there. Uh, language is next, 14th of May. 
and I've got a couple of ideas already, but if you've got any suggestions, please put them in the box in the middle, or if you've got any requests of things that you'd like me to cover, I will absolutely do my best. Okay, and um, we'll keep that up. And let's go through just a few final slides. What more can we do to help, obviously? Um, there is a link to register for next week. It's exactly the same. It's already up for next week. Oh, these are the new resources. Knowledge organizers have gone online for a Christmas carol and an inspector calls, OK? And I'm reading that you'd like something on comparisons. Yeah, I'm going to have that, give that a go. I have got a good idea on that. Um, the knowledge organizers consist of a blank for students to complete and also one fully completed and an A3 version as well. So they're available already now online. And we've also got an online learning pack that went live yesterday, I think, for Jekyll and Hyde. I wrote that a couple of weeks ago. It's got the full text. And for every chapter, it's got revision and learning activities. And they are intended not to be heavy analysis, because I'm finding my own students, even top set, are struggling with that. What they need is just to be able to read it and understand the plot. And that's what it's intended to be, really. And it's got exam questions at the end. So that's available now. And then the PowerPoint lessons I mentioned, they have just gone live. I didn't get a chance to put the link on, but we'll send the link out. OK, for A Christmas Carol, Jekyll and Hyde, and Inspector Calls and Poetry. So what it is, is for, for instance, for Inspector Calls, it talks the students through exactly how to find the, how to plan an answer and the need to plan, and how to make points effectively. And then there's a couple of model paragraph activities at the end, OK? Um, Oh, somebody says, thank you, Julie. I've seen the JH resource already, and it's brilliant. That's great. There's the link there for the PowerPoint lessons. And they're available already. So if you follow that link on screen, and we'll be sending that link out. So that's brilliant. They are, I think those PowerPoint lessons are great, because they're half an hour's recording, but you can make them last two or three hours if you want. Also, I need to mention there's a New York Notes resource out for Macbeth which Pam has just put the link up to there. It's really great. It's just uh, some short activities for Macbeth. Really, really good, actually, from your notes. It's brilliant. Um, and what else do we have? We have, there's Claire, your subject advisor. So go to Claire for anything you need on the English side. She's your first point of call. And if you want to switch to Edexcel, if you're not with us, there is a video there that will talk you through it should you want to get any more information about us. And then we've got a feedback link. And Sam, I think, is very briefly going to talk you through a new WhatsApp link before we end. So there we've got the feedback. And please stay on and do the feedback. That's what helps us. And if I hand over now, I'm going to say goodbye and thanks ever so much. And people have said thank you, that they share all the resources with our team. That's brilliant. And people are saying it's brilliant, which is great. So keep your ideas coming in for next week. And I'm going to hand you over and end with Sam now, who's going to tell you how to get on the WhatsApp group. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Julie. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I'll just talk to you quickly through um, this new WhatsApp group that we've created. Um, so we had quite a lot of feedback that uh, people were wanting to share contact details. And obviously, the, the chat goes quite quickly. So it's quite difficult to do that there. So what we've decided to do is create a WhatsApp group. So this has been created so that you can um, share resources, um, some support, chat. It's really just a place for you to connect with one another. Um, so to access the group and to join the group, you can follow the link um, on the screen now. Um, it'll also be sent out in the post-event email. Um, so you can access the link um, on the desktop or on your mobile. And um, it's pretty straightforward uh, once you kind of click through the link. And I know that big groups, often you'll get a lot of notifications through, which can be quite annoying. So you can also mute the group. So you'll see all of the, the things coming through, but it won't sort of ping every five minutes. Um, to do that, it's really easy. Um, you just go onto the group, click on the name of the group, and then there's an option in there to mute, and then you can choose whether you do it for eight hours, um, a week, or a year. Um, I think that kind of it. So, yeah, join the group, chat with everybody, and um, it's not somewhere that we're going to be taking questions um, about like anything to do with the qualifications. Um, but there is in the description of the group a link to um, our Facebook page and also to um, our subject specialist Claire. Um, and um, then you can also get in touch with us.
by email as well um, if you need anything. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything from me. And I uh, hope to see you all next week. Thanks, Sam. And, um, thank you. Thanks, Julie. Okay, thank you. That's it. I'm signing off now then. So please do the feedback and hopefully I'll see you all next week or the following week when it will be literature again. Okay, thanks. Bye.